I'm Tim Ola. I am the uh, group director at Bristol Myers Squibb. And uh, my interest in LCMS came really early on in the 1990s. I had uh, graduated from Princeton University, uh, gone on to uh, graduate school at the University of Pennsylvania, and I uh, got my first job at Merck Research Labs. And my uh, first supervisor, the late John Gilbert, asked me if I wanted to go on a demo to this small company called Cyex up in Thornhill, Canada. And I'd never been to Canada, and I'd never, uh, so they needed someone to essentially inject samples into their Cyex API 3. And so this was a time when uh, it was early days of LCMS, and Tom Covey was actually the demo chemist, and Bruce Thompson, who did the interface, was actually uh, connected to the LC. And so my job was to program the LC to inject uh, 100 samples in, in less than uh, three hours. And so this was the first time that we were doing 100 samples at a time at two minutes a run. And so we'd load up the auto sampler and go down the street to a pub and have a few pitches of beer and come back and uh, process the data. And, and the data was phenomenal. And so I was kind of hooked with the whole approach to LCMS back then. And it was, again, early days and just a lot of fun. Right now, my, my group's responsible for developing quantitative methods to measure both uh, novel therapeutic agents and biomarkers in, in discovery. And so our goal is to measure as many things as we can to really identify what's the key bit of data to, uh, to select a compound or, or to validate a target. So the group uh, is uh, heavily involved in developing these initial methods uh, on new drugs and really identifying new biomarkers. You know, we, we use a mixture of technologies in the, in the analytical process. We do a bit of uh, automated sample preparation, um, but mostly it's, it's running things by UPLC into a mass spectrometer, and, and so a variety of different microflow interfaces and nanoflow interfaces, and into a variety of different mass spectrometers. Our goal is really to develop methods that are to address a specific issue in a program, and, and so the idea is to identify what that issue is, design the right experiments, and then uh, provide the appropriate biological method to, to answer those questions. So each method is new, and, and so the variety of techniques that we apply can be varied depending upon the type of method that's required. Right now, uh, since we are in early discovery, every method that we develop is a brand new method. And so a lot of times it's really identifying what needs to be measured in these samples. Uh, we work uh, mostly in preclinical, though we've applied these methods into, into clinical assays. And so the biggest challenge is really is, 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 again, identifying what issue needs to be resolved in a particular stage of a program, and then determining and designing the appropriate experiment, and then figuring out what type of analysis is required uh, for that particular study. So we have a saying that the analytical method has to be sufficient to support the analysis of samples from that particular study. So the biggest challenge really is, is determining what level of analytical methodology is required and, and really how sufficient is that method. It doesn't have to be the most sensitive method in the world, it doesn't have to be the most specific. It really is geared towards answering a particular question at an early stage of discovery um, before moving on and selecting that compound. Yeah, I think uh, being in early discovery, it's, it's been we're pretty far away from the regulated space, though a lot of the analytical techniques and, and methods are developed early on in discovery. And so once we've identified that this is an appropriate drug that's going to move forward or this is an appropriate biomarker, it's then as that, um, as that method or uh, program advances, it's really about uh, advancing that methodology in, into additional studies or further studies. So really the, the regulation of, uh, of these methods are really based, I think, upon, upon good science, that once you've identified um, what it is you need to measure, having the appropriate um, technology and the appropriate workflows allow us then to uh, determine whether this method is sufficient to support the sample. So, you know, the regulated space is really once the assay is established and you know you're going to run it again on future studies, then one can begin to optimize that method, optimize how samples are collected, optimize how samples are prepared and analyzed in the data that's processed. So a lot of the regulations come following the establishment of a method and then the refinement of that method as it moves along the discovery into development process. I'm really hopeful for the use of LCMS in, in, in diagnostics. I, I think uh, anything that we can do to uh, advance patient care, you know, our, our goal is to really provide as much information as we can to really help support the early detection of disease, the uh, selection of the appropriate drug candidate, um, really demonstrating that therapies are viable and, and, and effective 
and, and not toxic, um, they're safe and effective. So I think really my hope is that you know the use of mass spec becomes much more widespread and can be applicable to to really patients. And, and the goal is to you know utilize this technology to really improve the, the quality of patient care. You know once again in either early detection in uh, in safe and effective treatments, and really uh, to really make medicines more affordable to people and, and more applicable to to, uh, to a wide range of patients. So this is a good one. Um, I think you got to be passionate about what you do, and, and I think you identify what you're passionate about, and, and it's, it, hopefully it's something that's positive. And I think scientists view the world a little different, and, and so it's, a, it's our responsibility really to provide good, accurate, honest data. There's been so much talk in, in, in the world today about, about fake news and about you know, fake data. That's important to scientists, that, that we continue to do honest, good scientific work. And so my advice to, to early scientists is, you know, be passionate about what you do, be honest about what you do, and really everything after that, you know, takes care of itself.